What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And in this episode, we continue our Lenten devotion, Faith of Our Fathers, still working through the Gospel of Mark. And today, we've got a phenomenal quote from Johann Sebastian Bach. And again, a little bit more of that catechesis. Stick around. <music> As we continue on on our Lenten devotion, going through the treasury of daily prayer, reading the Gospel of Mark, meditating on the words of the faithful cloud of witnesses that has gone before us, and learning about the Ten Commandments during this penitential time of the church, the season of Lent, I can't think of a better way to spend it. Let's get started. We're in the Gospel of Mark again. We're starting in Mark chapter 3, verse 20. Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they other. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Now, we don't really have the time to go into blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and what, what that is. Um, <laughs> you can search YouTube and you can see people thinking that they're doing it by saying curses against God or the Holy Spirit or even blaspheming Jesus' name. Uh, We'll just say this, and then we'll get to our quote from Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, as long as you draw breath, whatever blasphemies you utter, Jesus says, they will be forgiven. But to die, having not repented, ha having not been redeemed by Christ the crucified, there for that there is no forgiveness of sin. So take heart, today is the day of salvation, and today you have opportunity to repent of your blasphemies. Now, let's get to our quote, not from Martin Luther this time, but from Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, now, my God, thus do I fall, assured into thy bosom. Thus speaks the soul which trusts in God, when he the Savior's brotherhood and God's good faith in faith doth praise. Take me and work thy will within me until my life is finished. I know for sure that I, unfailing blessed, shall be, if my distress and this my grief and woe be by thee, will thus an end be granted. For thou dost know that to my soul thereby its help ariseth, that in my earthly lifetime to Satan's discontent thy heavenly realm in me be manifest, and thine own honor more and more be of itself exalted. Thus may my heart as thou commandest, find, O my Jesus, blessed stillness. And I may to thee, muted liars, the prince of peace, a new refrain now offer. To my shepherd I'll be true. Though he fill my cross's chalice, I'll rest fully in his pleasure. He stands in my sorrow near. One day, surely, done my weeping, Jesus' son again will brighten. To my shepherd I'll be true. Live in Jesus, who will rule me. Heart be glad, though thou must perish. Jesus hath enough achieved. Amen. Father, take me now. If I then too the way of death and its dark journey travel lead on, 
I'll walk the road and path which thine own eyes have shown me. Thou art my shepherd, who all things will bring to such conclusion that I, one day, within thy courts, thee evermore may honor. Johann Sebastian Bach, of course, being one of the greatest composers on earth, and of course, a staunch Lutheran. And I highly recommend you take a look through YouTube to find some of his cantatas that he has written for specific Sundays throughout the church year. Now, during this penitent time of the season of Lent, it is good that we should reflect on God's word and our falling short so that this word of God, this law of God may move us to repentance. Therefore, the gospel can come in and assure us with the peace that is the faith which trusts the promise that we have the forgiveness of sins. So, for this Tuesday in the first week of Lent, we continue with our catechesis, focusing on the second and third commandment again out of portions of the large catechism. The second commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. If someone now asks, how do you understand the second commandment, or what is meant by taking God's name in vain or misusing God's name, answer briefly in this way. It means misusing God's name when we call upon the Lord God, no matter how, in order to deceive or do wrong of any kind. Therefore, this commandment makes this point. God's name must not be appealed to falsely or taken upon our lips while the heart knows well enough or should know (laughs) that the truth of the matter is different. God's name cannot be misused worse than for the support of falsehood and deceit. But the greatest abuse occurs in spiritual matters. These have to do with the conscience. When false preachers rise up and offer their lying vanities as God's word. Jonah 2.8 The third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. This is the simplest meaning of the third commandment. People must have holidays. Therefore, such observances should be devoted to hearing God's word, so that the special function of the day of rest should be the ministry of the word for the young and the mass of poor people. Nehemiah 8, 2 through 3 and 8. Yet the resting should not be strictly understood to forbid any work that comes up, which cannot be avoided. To sanctify the holy day is the same as to keep it holy. But what is meant by keeping it holy? Nothing else than to be occupied with holy words, works, and life. God desires the day to be holy to you. Therefore, it becomes holy or unholy because of you, whether you are occupied on that day with things that are holy or unholy. God's word is true. Holy things, above all holy things. Yes, it is the only one we Christians know and have. God's word is the treasure that sanctifies everything. 1 Timothy 4, 5. Whenever God's word is taught, preached, heard, read, or meditated upon, then the person, day, and work are sanctified. This is not because of the outward work, but because of the word which makes saints of us all. We pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son, Jesus, triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us to always do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.